Well, folks, it's time for another XR AMA recap. Hearthstone developer XR took to Twitter to answer your questions. He talked nerfs and buffs and bugs and so much more. And we're going to get into it here, kicking it off with a conversation about balance. Zeddy asked about underperforming classes. Ixar responds, I don't work on expansion balance anymore, but Warlock and Priest are in a lower than average for worst classes of the expansion. So uh, they're doing <laughs> much worse than normal. They're really, really bad. Ixar goes on to say, we'll try to address some of that in the next balance patch. Now that sounds like a hint towards buffs, which we'll talk about more in a future question. He also adds that Demon Hunter is a bit too strong but I wouldn't call it a surprise. So they kind of knew Demon Hunter was going to be good, but uh, also hints here towards nerfs for Demon Hunter. And I think ultimately that's going to be a good thing for the Hearthstone meta. Demon Hunter is really, really popular pretty much across all ranks, but especially as you get higher and closer towards Legend, it makes up so many of your matches. It gets really tiresome and boring to play against. And that's not a good experience for people. They want to have diversity of matchups, different kind of gameplay experiences, it also creates this really warped meta, I think, where Control Warrior comes in to beat the Demon Hunters, and then that's a really polarizing matchup as well. So you got these super polarized top ends of the meta that feels very rock, paper, scissory, and it's really not that good for anybody. So, uh, you know, I don't ever want Blizzard to come in and, and nerf a deck to the ground, because even if you're playing Demon Hunter, you spent your hard-earned dust and, you know, gold on Demon Hunter, money on Demon Hunter. So hopefully it remains, you know, a viable deck, but I think pulling its win rate down to a healthier spot, letting other things, you know, move to the top of the meta, shake things up, shake up some experiences prior to any mini sets in the future would still be really nice uh, for the meta. So sounds like that's exactly what they're looking to do. And maybe even bringing up Warlock and Priest via buffs. In fact, here are some more details. We're considering buffing mini cards in the near future. They may not be the cards we've nerfed in the past, though. This is a reference to... Uh, nerfed cards getting rebuffed, but uh, mini cards getting buffed. You know, they've had this philosophy in the past where it can be hard to buff cards because you might push them too far. It's hard to know what's the right threshold to make them good. Uh, but apparently that's not stopping them here. I don't know what mini constitutes, you know, in the world of Blizzard, mini might be like four to six. But we've also seen stuff in the past where like, I think it was like 18 cards were buffed back in the day for the like, uh, what was that called? Like the rise of the mechs event or something. Can't remember back in the day, but the like booms day buffs. Um, there were some big changes there. So, you know, maybe 10 cards or something wouldn't be impossible. It sounds like warlock and priest might be a focus in particular to bring those up. So uh, stay tuned for potentially some big, big changes in the meta and in your favorite class. If you like priest and warlock, all right, next up is a question about having more info and details accessible in clients. So things like patch notes, bugs, and so forth. Right now, to get all this stuff, you have to go to the website or Twitter or like the forum. And um, I, I agree with the sentiment of this question that it, it, I don't think that's a great experience for people. People don't want to have to hop out of the game and go find additional information. And a lot of it's important. And, uh, you know, stuff like these crazy bugs lately are game impacting very directly and expecting people to be responsible to track all that down, it doesn't feel like a great experience to me. Uh, XR acknowledges they want to have more info accessible in client. It's just not super high on our list of features to do. Features that are very far down on the backlog always have the risk of never getting made, but it is on the backlog. I, you know, I think this is unfortunate. I kind of just put out this video yesterday talking a lot about bugs and uh, the state of the tech debt and all the client problems in Hearthstone and how I, I do wish it was a little bit more of an emphasis. Even here, this is repeated. It's not something that's at the top of list. Uh, it's getting pushed down in favor of new content and new stuff. And don't get me wrong. I love new content and new stuff. It's probably better for me personally as a YouTuber to have new stuff to talk about, new features and things. But I don't think it's better for the player base. Like I, I think there needs to be more shoring up of the problems as opposed to just introducing more and more stuff. You can only distract with new shiny things for so long before the bottom kind of falls out. And uh, even though this wouldn't necessarily change a lot of those technical issues, at least, you know, giving people more information and more expectations and and timelines and communication. I think all that would really help people be more understanding of the problems and uh, not feel so frustrated and, and kind of clueless and helpless as we do currently. So, you know, this is just another small philosophical difference that I would take personally, but you know, there are probably business decisions and 
crazy things behind the scenes we can't see that, that demand this sort of emphasis on forward momentum as a forward as opposed to sort of looking backwards and and, and fixing things up it's kind of a shame curious what you guys think talking more about the same kind of conversation in fact here is another specific question about bugs uh kevin mentions the new patch drops you see a little jankiness like menus not working ui elements slightly out of whack uh so on and so forth and xr acknowledges things break all the time in testing we fix most of them and some slip through for the ones that slip through we review what we could have done to prevent it in dev and qa does the same bugs will always happen we strive to do as good as we can and um yeah that's fine i i mean bugs do indeed always happen i think having a expectation for some bugs existing is completely right the the problem here and i don't know that either the question or the answer really got to the heart of it is that I think it's getting a lot worse and the bugs are uh, so much more dramatically game impacting things like Bran Ashara, right? Like it's the spotlight legendary of the expansion. It's one of the most exciting new returning core cards and that breaks the game for weeks after the expansions release. And then Nelly as well, right? Nelly is breaking the game still today, even after being fixed, right? These are like not random side cases and really obscure stuff. These are, big key legendaries things that are going to be talked about and then be played a ton those are the ones that i think are frustrating when it's literally game breaking and i mean this is the right philosophy like we want to do better of course acknowledging it and, and doing better is what we want but i think we need something more concrete here as far as how this stuff is going to get answered if people want to feel confident in the game of course blizzard can do what they want it's their game but people are going to leave if they don't have confidence in the product being trustworthy Moving on to a little more positive note, this is a question about dual class cards, and XR says, we'll return to dual class cards at some point. Dual class was a big hit. I agree, I loved dual class cards a ton. Low in-game complexity, but high payoff in terms of opening more uses for every card. We might do some one-offs in a mini set. Sounds great to me. To make it a core mechanic of a set again, we'd want to find a theme that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll take both of those, man. Give me more dual class that was awesome i'd like to see actually different class pairings i think that'd be really fun to see that open up maybe some things that don't feel inherently natural i always like the idea of like you know uh warlock and paladin together kind of at odds but seemed like a cool cool combination lakers colors basically <laughs> might be nice so uh sounds awesome so this is great news this is something i've wanted forever it's a question about random hero portraits we just got random card back support this is now uh, random hero portraits are in progress. It's going well. Not sure when they'll hit, but uh, sometime during next expansion cycle, if all goes well, that's an A+. There's so many portraits now. We're getting a ton of stuff for free. I like buying certain portraits. And you know, it's, I, I don't want to be limited to one per deck where I have to kind of go in and manually change it, right? I want to be delighted and surprised whenever I queue up a game. It's like, ooh, today we're Sir Finley. Oh, now we're Arthas. Now we're brian kibler paladin you know what whatever it is i want to be uh it would have kind of be along for the ride so that is a great feature cannot wait to see it some quick hits here will there be an adventure mode in the year of the hydra no adventures also still no plans for a tournament in the future nothing in development on the short list of major features we still want to make that's a little disappointing i thought we'd gotten some teases been a while ago now I, as i recall where tournament mode seemed like a bigger priority and there might even be some momentum in that direction sounds like that's not really the case nothing in the works just yet still just on the horizon for the blizz team i'm still on board for tournament mode i think there could be a lot of fun with that one all right here's a question about an ultimate skin for hero skins uh where it's a hero skin with a different treatment on the hero power i don't actually remember them talking about this a lot in a previous ama but Ixar says, still in development, uh, but yes, we're working on an ultimate skin type, name to be determined. I was just leaving feedback on some of the prototypes today. So as I'm reading this, I, I guess that means like a hero power that has a different skin specifically. Traditionally, they've kept hero powers uh, the same visually across uh, skins for a class because uh, it's really the only good way to kind of identify what you're playing against at a glance. And it's like that super easily recognizable thing. Otherwise, you might be like, wait, what's that hero power skin? Have to go ho hover over it and so on. I, I run into that in duels still where it's like I have trouble identifying certain hero powers and there's not that many. So I do understand why they've wanted to keep hero powers the same. It does often look weird when there's like a fireball for mage on their ping on like a frost themed character. So I understand the desire for cosmetics there. 
there are some downsides from a gameplay experience standpoint, unless it was an asymmetrical of the, if the hero power was cosmetic for you, but maybe not your opponent, which um, would be a little sad to know that your cosmetic wasn't being seen by your opponent, but for the sake of gameplay, it might be a fine sacrifice as long as everything else was seen by your opponent. So uh, interesting. I'm curious to see what these look like. So here's a question about uh, the mini set being related to Sunken City. No spoilers, but our path with mini sets has been to do something in the same locale from Warcraft or something that continues a story we're telling. I'd expect one of those. Uh, so I think we're going to go to like, uh, what, what's it called? Like Throne of Tides with um, Azamat and Neptulon. It's kind of a similar water themed set where it's like maybe the uh, Phelan and crew have explored the sunken city, but now they're going to go into another underwater space to explore something else or uh, dive a little deeper, if you will. <laughs> so that's my thought, but curious to hear other speculations. I'm glad that it's going to be on theme. I think that's nice uh, since they do kind of all come together in the same packs and stuff. So here's a question about, uh, well, it's a big, it's a big question as you can see, but basically uh, sort of the exposure publicity, uh, success of videos in Hearthstone, I think specifically in Japan, in this case. And uh, Ixar says, Japan is a huge market for strategy and card gaming. Though to be honest, the Warcraft IP doesn't do as well there as it does in other regions. Trust me when I say we'd love, love to have a bigger audience in Japan. I've spoken about it frequently. We've discussed working with a Japanese IP to do cross promotion and even floated the idea of making a very Hearthstone inspired card game in Japan but in an art style and IP that was more likely to gain traction. That's kind of crazy sounding like a, a Hearthstone spinoff that would do better in Japan. I don't know if that means like, you know, Overwatch with like a more anime art style or something, but uh, sounds nuts. Either are unlikely to happen, but more exploration is warranted and glad you're enjoying the game. That's just a crazy thing to think about. I'm curious what that could be. I mean, I, I think I'd welcome that. Uh, I'd, I'd play another sort of spin-off version of Hearthstone for sure. That said, uh, that wraps it up for our Hearthstone AMA with Ixar this time around. We got some nerfs and buffs on the way. It sounds like pretty exciting stuff. Which cards would you guys like to see nerfed and buffed? I might do a little video on that in the future, targeting which cards for Priest and uh, Warlock I would personally buff and which ones I might nerf. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts as well. You might even inspire my video. Uh, so thanks much as always for watching. I guess I have to ask you guys to like the video now. Seems like it's actually way too important for the YouTube algorithm. So I guess like the video. I hate asking. I feel stupid to me, but hit, hit please, please t gent gently massage the like button, if you will. <laughs> Don't smash it. Be, be kind. Uh, but thanks as always for watching. I love you guys a ton. And uh, until next time, game on.